It's summertime and for some odd reason many of you ask me one specific question. What projector should I buy? Well, the dumbest piece of advice would be to just say buy the brightest one you can get. So you're in the market to buy a projector and now you want to know which one to buy. Well, there are certain rules that apply to buying a projector, whether it be a small one like this one, or one of those pretty large ones, like um, that one. I am not going to recommend any models or any brands, because I think I want to have this video on for more than three weeks and the market is uh, pretty fluent. So uh, let's look at some basic rules to buy a projector. There is the budget question. Buy the projector you can afford. Then there is the space concern. Buy the projector that fits your space. By size, but also by heat and by noise. Because larger projectors might get brighter, but they also get a lot hotter. And by that, they get a lot louder. So if they're inside, well, maybe just go with a smaller one that is not as noisy. Look at the decibel, for example, to judge how loud it is. And then maybe it doesn't have to be that bright if it's in a small space. The technology plays a big role when it comes to the heat built up in a projector. Modern solid state lamps based on laser or laser LED output a lot more light with less heat. So most times they are quieter because they don't need that much cooling. At the same time, classical lamps have one big advantage. They are cheaper. Well, in the first place. But then... What do these have in common? Have you ever bought one of these after obtaining an electrical toothbrush? Exactly. Same thing goes for cheap projectors and their lamps. That thing will cost you almost as much as the projector was. You're gonna change it from time to time and uh, this is what they make their money with. So buying cheap sometimes is buying expensive. And so the seemingly expensive laser LED projector you wanna buy is maybe not that expensive because you're gonna change the lamp. Well, you're not gonna change it because you're quite possibly not reaching the 20,000 hours that lamp is supposed to hold up to. Whereas when it comes to the technology behind the creation of the image, there are two religions. One is... and the other is... And again, you won't see me recommend any specific technology, because both are pretty generalized phrases that are untrue in some way. For example, LCD can nowadays create stunning contrast, whereas DLP in the olden days created some kind of choppiness and because of the mechanics inside the DLP chip you would see big slices in between the pixels. They are gone now. Technology advances a lot. Have a look at the image and if the image pleases you. It's more important to understand the technology behind it. So does the projector create all three colors RGB within one frame? Or does it slice it up and use something that we call the persistence of vision? Persistence of vision describes the trick that your eyes do when they recomposite frames that come really, really, really quickly after each other. So if you send a red, a green and a blue frame, your eyes can recomposite that to a colorful image. Your eyes can do the trick. The cameras that you brought to film your projections can't do the trick. They will create some bars rolling up and down if something is wrong in between the frame rate of your camera and the frame rate of the projector. So it's really important to know if your projector is creating the shades between black and white by flickering 120 times a second or if it's creating colors by turning a wheel in front of a lamp because you don't want that. By the way, most projectors will stop this odd behavior as soon as you set them up the same as your camera. So your camera is recording at 50, but this is 60 hertz. Just change your settings to 50 hertz on your computer and the projector will most likely output an image that fits the settings of your camera. Even the most expensive projectors can cause flickering and other artifacts if they're not set up like your camera. 
So make a test and find out if you can film what you're projecting and maybe think about if you really have to film what you're projecting. The next question you might want to ask yourself is, does it have all the connectors I need? And meanwhile, ask yourself, do I really need all the connectors or is a HDMI port just enough for my needs? If you need analog, make sure you've got analog because digital to analog conversion is, uh, well, you might need some more tools to that. And uh, let's get to one of the more frequent questions. What resolution should I buy? Well, by any means, if you can afford it, get the highest resolution out there. But if you can't afford it, get a reasonable resolution. If you spread a 720p image over 12 meters width, then your pixels are that wide. Just this wide. And from like 20 meters away in a theater, you won't see the individual pixels. If you spread a 720p image on your home cinema wall with 2 meters, well then the pixels get so fine you can't even see them. So why go 4K if you can't afford 4K? A far more interesting question is what throw ratio should I buy? This highly depends on the space you're projecting in. Let me explain the throw ratio numbers. The first number signifies the number of meters that you need to achieve a second number one meter wide image. So if this starts at 1.7, well, you need 1.7 meters to create a one meter wide image. While this projector has a 1.2 by 1 ratio, which means at a short 1.2 meters I can get this one meter wide image. Short throw projectors go under zero, so it's 0 0.5 meters they need to project a one meter wide image. It's pretty crucial to understand the mathematics of those projection ratios. If you're too far away, your image gets too wide and then maybe you're spending all those lumens for nothing. If you're too close, your image will get really, really, really small and then maybe your audience is not happy with it. So do the math before you buy a projector that has a fixed lens. Or instead of buying a fixed lens projector, get out there and buy a projector with interchangeable lenses. But keep in mind, physics have their limits. And lastly, the most common question when it comes to projectors. How bright should my projector be? You will need something to measure, a calculator and an app that can measure looks. And of course you will need the space that you are going to project in. Let's pretend this 10 by 6 meter wall is what we're going to project on. And let's measure the looks on here. It's around 100. A good projection will need five times the looks that we have to be visible. Now, five times 100 is 500 times the square meters. In this case, 30,000 lumens would be necessary to illuminate this wall with sufficient projection to make it visible and give nice contrast. There is only two ways of dealing with that. Throwing money at the problem or turning off the lights. Keep in mind that most manufacturers calculate their lumens, well, let's say marketing based and not so much based on physical facts. Um, they would boost the lamps or just measure the center lumens or use lenses that in real life you can't buy. Also, before you spend all your hard-earned money on a projector, maybe just rent it for a day. Ask the shop you're going to buy it in or some rental service if you can have it for one day and spend some money on testing. If this video was helpful to you, maybe give it a like, consider subscribing to this channel and I'll be seeing you next time.